After studying this module, we shall be able to know the concept of inflation, understand about demand pull and cost push inflation, and evaluate the effect of inflation. In general, an increase in the price level is known as inflation. Classical economists considered inflation to be a purely monetary phenomenon which actually had no impact on the level of employment, output and production. As per classical economists, the free market where there was no government intervention along with uh, a system of wage price flexibility would keep the economy at a level of full employment through the invisible hand. If there was an upward pressure on the prices, then it would be countered by an increase in the wage level of the factor inputs and as a consequence, however, if fiscal and monetary policies are used for development of the economy, uh, it would often lead to inflationary pressures. Keynesian economists are of the view that a little bit of inflation can be sustained since it would have a positive effect on employment and production. But over the time it has been observed that inflation also creates an adverse effect on the economy. Uh, due to an inefficient pricing mechanism that prevails in the market, inflation redistributes wealth amongst the members of society. Due to this process, some of the members of society benefit at the cost of others. People who are in the lower income brackets and those who have fixed uh, incomes, such groups of the population are worst affected by inflation. There is uh, an increase in the price level and a decrease in the real value of consumption for those whose incomes are fixed. Uh, in fact, the lower and middle classes uh, are really hard hit by inflation uh, because when the rate of inflation increases, uh, then their real purchasing power decreases. Uh, <clears throat> due to the process of the purchasing power going down significantly, uh, there is a situation where their welfare is affected. For this reason, uh, when inflation rises, the, there is a protest from mainly from the uh, people belonging to the lower and middle income groups. The problem is worst when uh, in such economies, in addition to inflation, there are acute inequalities in the distribution of income. Where there is more of inequality, the majority of the population consists of lower and middle class groups and consequently the majority of the population is badly affected by inflation. Inflation is nowadays concerned with the social evils as well. However, sometimes it is said that uh, some amount of inflation is a necessary social evil. Uh, due to government intervention in an economy uh, for its economic development, there is a momentum in the economy which simultaneously puts an upward pressure on prices. Uh, but the dilemma is how much of inflation can be sustained. There is a trade-off involved. Uh, in uh, short, we will be discussing the reasons for inflation and its effects on the economy which is something which we will be looking at very shortly.
demand pull inflation arises due to positive demand shock in an economy due to positive demand shock aggregate demand of an economy rises the aggregate demand of an economy is defined as a summation of consumption expenditure investment expenditure and government expenditure increases in any of these expenditures shall result in the rise of the aggregate demand thus demand pull can be due to increase in marginal propensity to consume increase in investment expenditure increase in government expenditure and lenient monetary expansion the main cause of demand pull inflation is positive demand shock in an economy positive demand shock increases the aggregate demand of an economy due to increase in aggregate demand there is outward shift in aggregate demand curve of an economy the positive demand shock is created due to increase in marginal propensity to consume increase in investments by private sector fiscal policies and lax monetary policies demand pull inflation is explained through the diagram the diagram has two parts that is upper panel and lower panel in the upper panel is and lm curves are shown and in the lower panel aggregate demand and supply curves are shown initially the equilibrium is at y0 level of output that is at the intersection of is0 and lm0 as shown in the upper panel of the diagram this equilibrium is also shown in the lower panel of the diagram that is at the intersection of dd0 and ss0 the level of output is y0 with price level p0 in the lower panel price sensitive aggregate demand curve and aggregate supply curve is shown due to sticky wage assumption we have upward sloping aggregate supply curve as there is increase in demand there are shifts in is curve and aggregate demand both of these curves shift upwards is curve shifts from is0 to is2 in the upper panel of the diagram thereby shifting the equilibrium level of output to y2 in the lower panel of the diagram as there is increase in demand aggregate demand curve also shifts from dd0 to dd1 now aggregate demand will move along with new demand curve dd1 and at current price level that is p0 the new demand would be y2 however at this price level aggregate supply would move along with supply curve ss0 and supply would remain at y0 hence at current level price 0 there is excess demand to the extent of y0 y2 this would create an upward pressure on the price level and as a consequence price level would start rising the price level would rise until excess demand wipes out and aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply due to increase in price level real value of consumption would decrease and the rate of savings would rise this would shift the is curve to the left in the upper panel of the diagram due to increase in price level is curve again shifts but to the left that is from is2 to is1 rise in price level would also decrease the real value of money supply due to decrease in real value of money supply the lm curve would shift to the left again in the upper panel of the diagram due to increase in price level the lm curve shifts from lm0 to lm2 due to the shift in both is and lm curves new equilibrium shall be established at y1 level of output in the lower panel of the diagram 
the aggregate demand would decrease as a result of increase in price level along with demand curve DD1. As price level increases, aggregate supply would increase along with supply curve SS0 and new equilibrium will establish at Y1 level of output with price level P1. At Y1 level of output with price level P1, all markets would clear and be in equilibrium. Hence, when there is demand pull inflation arises, there is simultaneously an increase in the level of output also. Cost push inflation arises due to negative supply shock in an economy. When there is supply shock, there is shift in aggregate supply curve. When the supply shock is negative, aggregate supply curve shifts to the left, implying that there is increase in the cost of production. Aggregate supply curve may shift to the left due to change in work leisure preference, domination of trade unions, increase in oil prices, or increase in food prices, etc. Cost push inflation is explained through this diagram. This diagram has two parts, that is upper panel and lower panel. In the upper panel, IS and LM curves are shown, and in the lower panel, aggregate demand and supply curves are shown. Initially, the equilibrium is at Y0 level of output, that is at the intersection of IS0 and LM0 as shown in the upper panel of the diagram. This equilibrium is also shown in the lower panel of the diagram that is at the intersection of aggregate demand curve DD0 and aggregate supply curve SS0 having equilibrium level of output at Y0 with price level P0. Now, in an economy, aggregate supply curve shifts to the left due to the increase in cost. As aggregate supply curve shifts, the new supply curve is represented by SS1. With price level P0, the aggregate supply along with new aggregate supply curve shall be reduced to Y2. However, the aggregate demand shall remain at Y0. This will result in a mismatch of demand and supply and the supply will fall far short of demand by Y2, Y0. Shortage of supply shall build pressure on the existing price level and as a consequence, price levels shall start rising. Due to increase in price level, IS curves shall shift to the left. In the upper panel of the diagram, due to the increase in price level, IS curve again shifts to the left, that is, from IS0 to IS1. Rise in price level would also shift the LM curve to the left. Again, in the upper panel of the diagram, due to increase in price level, the LM curve shifts from LM0 to LM1. Due to the shift in both IS and LM curves, new equilibrium shall be established at Y1 level of output. In the lower panel of the diagram, the aggregate demand would decrease as a result of the increase in price level along with demand curve DD0. As price level increases, aggregate supply would increase along with supply curve SS1 and new equilibrium will establish at Y1 level of output with price level P1. At Y1 level of output with price level P1, all markets would clear and be in equilibrium. Hence, when there is cost push inflation, there is reduction in the level of output as against demand pull inflation where output rises. Demand pull inflation increases output. Due to the increase in output, there is an increase in employment since extra labor is required to produce additional output. In contrast, cost push inflation decreases output. 
However, the impact of cost push inflation on employment is not known. The impact of cost push inflation on employment depends upon production function. Production function shows functional relationship between output, dependent variable, and various factor inputs, independent variables such as labor, capital, raw material, etc. It may happen that due to increase in prices of various inputs, employers shall try to substitute other factor inputs with labor. Due to this, employment may not fall. In the diagram, N represents level of labor employment and Y represents output. Initially, the production function is given by Y is equal to function of N, V0. V0 represents other factor inputs except labor, which is at fixed level. When the level of output is at Y0, the employment level along with original production function is N0. Due to cost push inflation, the equilibrium output level reduced to Y1. However, the impact of cost push inflation on employment depends upon production function. If production function remains the same, that is, y is equal to function of n, v0, then employment shall reduce to n1. But if production function shifts down due to substitution of other factor inputs with labor, the new production function shall be y is equal to function of n, v1, where v1 represents other factor inputs except labor which is again at fixed level and less than V0. The level of labor employment that is required to produce Y1 level of output along with production function Y is equal to function of N, V1 is N0. Hence, it is seen that although output level is reduced due to cost push inflation from Y0 to Y1, there is no effect on employment level since due to inflation employers substitute other factor inputs with labor and as a consequence there is no reduction in employment. If the substitution of other factor inputs with labor is very large then employment level may even increase although there is reduction in level of output due to cost push inflation. In above diagram the substitution effect is so large that production function shifts from y is equal to function of n, v0 to y is equal to function of n, v2. In this production function, v2 represents other factor inputs except labor, which once again is at fixed level and less than both v0 and v1. The labor that should be employed to produce y1 level of output along with production function y is equal to function of n, v2 is n2. In this case, it is seen that although level of output reduced from y0 to y1, there is increase in level of employment and employment increases from n0 to n2. Hence, it is seen that effect of cost push inflation is unknown on employment. It all depends upon shift in production function which in turn depends upon the substitution of other factor inputs due to price increase with labor. Once an economy comes under the pressure of inflation, then it gets trapped into a loop of non-ending inflation. Inflation starts working as a self-fulfilling prophecy. Expected inflation in the current period turns out to be actual inflation in the next period. The process through which all this happens is known as wage price spiral. Wage price spiral is a phenomenon which turns expected inflation into actual inflation. This process occurs since there is expectation of inflation in an economy, so the factors of production which have higher bargaining power start to increase their wage rates. Due to increase in wage rates, the cost of production rises, giving rise to cost push inflation in an economy. However, 
wage price spiral has certain elements of demand pull inflation also as there is increase in wage rate there is increase in factor incomes especially of labor due to increase in their wage rates now labor can spend more thereby increasing aggregate demand for an economy this process of wage price spiral starts with the expectation of inflation in an economy due to the expectation of inflation in an economy every factor of production starts demanding higher factor incomes due to this rational profit seeking behavior there is increase in the cost of production and as a consequence aggregate supply curve shifts to the left due to the redistribution of income among factors of production the factors of production which have higher bargaining power are able to successfully increase their wages especially labor hence as labor gets enhanced wages their consumption also increases thereby increasing the aggregate demand of an economy initially the equilibrium level of output is y0 with price level p0 at the intersection of aggregate demand curve dd0 and aggregate supply curve ss0 there is expectation of inflation in an economy and the economy is operating at nearly full employment level due to the expectation of inflation workers start claiming higher wage rate since due to inflation their real wages would fall down as the economy is operating at full employment level so workers are in a position to bargain for a higher wage rate the increase in wage rate would shift the supply curve to the left and new aggregate supply curve would be ss1 due to increase in wage rate there is redistribution of income and wage earners gain wage earners have higher marginal propensity to consume than other factors of production hence there is an increase in aggregate demand and aggregate demand curve would shift upwards that is from dd0 to dd1 now there is shift in both aggregate demand curve and aggregate supply curve and new equilibrium would establish at original level of output that is y0 but at higher price level that is p1 once again there is an expectation of inflation in an economy so the workers shall again start to demand higher wages they will be successful in increasing wage rate since the economy is already at full employment level and the employer has no choice except to increase the workers wage rate this increase in wage rate shall once again shift the aggregate supply curve from ss1 to ss2 once again there will be redistribution of income and the workers will again be benefited this will increase the aggregate demand and as a consequence new demand curve would be dd2 once again the equilibrium shall be established at original level of output y0 but again at a higher price level that is at p2 hence it can be seen how wage price spiral forms a never ending loop of inflation it is through wage price spiral that expected inflation turns into actual inflation and inflation works out as a self fulfilling prophecy due to wage price spiral there is never ending increase in price level without any effect on output another implication of wage price spiral is that high wage earners are able to increase their wage rate due to their dominance but low wage earners are not able to increase their wage rate there is redistribution of income but only benefiting high wage earners and not low wage earners due to increase in wage rate of high wage earners there is increase in average wage thereby shifting the supply curve towards the left but there is negligent shift in aggregate demand since high wage earners have a lower marginal propensity to consume than low wage earners as a consequence price level rises but output reduces 
thus worsening the overall situation in an economy. In this module, initially the concept of inflation is explained. Inflation in general increase is an increase in the price level. As per classical economists, there is a dichotomy between monetary and real factors and inflation actually does not have any impact on output and employment. Keynes on the other hand uh, did not believe in dichotomy and Keynes's thinking was radically different and Keynes postulated that fiscal and monetary policy uh, would help in uh, handling the situation in an economy whether there was inflation or whether there was re recession in the economy. Through uh, the use of monetary and fiscal policy, Keynes emphasized that both output and employment could be increased. However, the use of fiscal and monetary policy uh, often themselves bring inflationary pressures because when the mon through monetary policy, when the money supply increases, this is likely to bring in inflationary pressures. Similarly, when the government spends more, this also is responsible for increasing the rate of inflation. Inflation is mainly of two types, uh, demandful inflation and cost push inflation. Demandful in inflation arises due to a positive demand shock. Due to a positive demand shock, what happens is aggregate demand increases and therefore there is an excess demand at the current level of output. So due to this excess demand, there is a pressure on the price level and prices start rising. Once prices start rising, the excess demand is wiped off because there is a uh, decline in the demand due to this increase in price. Aggregate demand goes down and then aggregate demand ultimately becomes equal to aggregate supply. This process continues till the time that both aggregate demand and aggregate supply become equal to each other. Uh, in the new equilibrium established, although in the new equilibrium which is established, the price level is higher and thus when inflation uh, is demand pull inflation, there is a simultaneous increase in the level of output as well. In the case of cost push inflation, this happens due to a negative supply shock. Due to a negative supply shock, production increases thereby production costs increase thereby there is a shifting of the aggregate supply function to the left uh, that is a, there is a contraction of the aggregate supply function and at the existing price level aggregate supply falls short of aggregate demand thereby it creates an upward pressure on the current price level. The price level starts to rise uh, until aggregate demand is equal to the aggregate supply. In the new equilibrium, till the new equilibrium is established or when the new equilibrium is established, a higher price level has been established but at a reduced level of output. Thus, in contrast to demand pull inflation, cost push inflation actually reduces the equilibrium level of output. Both demand pull and cost push inflation have different impacts on the equilibrium level of output. Demand pull inflation increases the equilibrium level of output whereas cost push, push inflation decreases the equilibrium level of output. Demand pull inflation has a positive effect on employment and also increases production and output and this can be met through an increase in employment. However, 
the effect of cost push inflation on employment is uncertain. Cost push inflation is related to employment through the production function. If there is a substitution of other factor inputs with labor due to an increase in the price level, then employment level may remain the same or may even increase although equilibrium output is falling. It, is, it all depends upon how large is the substitution of other factor inputs with labor due to an increase in the price level. Uh, in the end, a special case of cost push inflation is explained which is called wage price spiral. Wage price spiral is mainly a cost push inflation that combines certain elements of demand pull as well. Wage price spiral is a vicious cycle through which an indefinite loop of inflation is formed. An economy ex is expecting inflation so that workers start demanding higher wages. Due to this, there is an increase in the cost of production, thereby shifting the aggregate supply function to the left. As wages of workers rise, there is a simultaneous increase in aggregate demand because workers began to spend these excess wages. Thereby, the aggregate demand curve shifts to the right. So, two things are happening simultaneously. The aggregate supply function is shifting to the left and the aggregate sub, uh, demand function is shifting to the right. Due to the shift in the aggregate demand and the aggregate supply, the new equilibrium is established at a higher level of price, but the output remains the same. The wage price spiral is a process in which the economy is in a continuous loop of inflation without any effect on the equilibrium level of output.